This is Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz, joined today by Robert Hickey. He is a nominee for the San Diego City Attorney position. Two candidates left, went from primary to general. And I want to speak with you about what has to be one of the most devastating crimes that could ever hit a family. I'm the father of two daughters, 14 and 12. We have a friend. We live in a, you know, a nice neighborhood. And uh, her stepdaughter at the age of 17 was trapped. Gone right. for three months. Gone for three months. Yep. Sir, you see it as a deputy DA. I, I do, and I did, and it's, it is horrifying. It's become, a, almost, it's become an $800 million industry in San Diego alone, San Diego County. I first learned about how extensive the problem was and how the gangs were very involved in it. About 80% of trafficking victims are victims of gang members. And what, I, what I, we found out, we were doing a, a wiretap investigation into a horrible gang murder case. And, of course, the gang members were talking about murder and, right. and, and running guns and drugs. But certainly the number two subject after murder and revenge was human trafficking. Come on. How, yeah, absolutely. How to find women, girls, to recruit and how to get them to become prostitutes Come for on. you. And it was through abuse, violence. Uh, money maker? I mean, they're making money off these It's girls? about money, and it's, a, it's also a prestige. How many girls, they would complain about how few girls they had, and oh, you need to get more girls. I have more girls working than you. It was part of the gang prestige as well as money. And what's remarkable to me, <clears throat> sir, is that I think many of us have a perception that those that are trafficked, especially for sex trafficking, are international. They're coming from Mexico. Here we are right. in San Diego. Not true. No, there's absolutely a huge issue with, uh, with illegal massage parlors that are really fronts for right. prostitution, and those women are largely here by human trafficking. So that's a huge issue. But a second part of the equation are the gang members who are going to, going to the high schools, going to the mall in recruiting. Uh, one of the victims we learned about through the wiretapping, both of her parents were school teachers here in San Diego. Uh, he met her at a mall. Uh, started to abuse her, and after abusing her, he knew he kind of owned her and could put her into, into trafficking, and uh, it was horrifying. What can you do presuming victory as city attorney, which deals mostly with misdemeanors, right. but still, there is a, a bully pulpit that you have, a city attorney of San Diego. I mean, you know, second biggest city in this, this state. Right. The city attorney's office handles ten to 15,000 misdemeanor crimes mm -hmm. a year. Those include uh, solicitation for prostitution, mm. which means you're prosecuting the buyers, the Johns. Right. Uh, there's a there's a recent movement in the law, and it's I believe it's about to become law. I know what you're saying. To uh, separate the women from the the, the prostitutes right. from the Johns or buyers, and also the minors who are prostitutes Absolutely. from those that are adults that are prostitutes. We need to start treating them like victims. Right. So I looked at the problem and realized that the city attorney can have a real play on the demand side. If we can prosecute the buyers, you know, the Johns, uh, and send a big message, we can make a dent. So I put out, and I'm putting out a plan, a detailed plan on how the city attorney can make an impact there. We have to use the office as a place to encourage and work with the police department to do more enforcement. Uh, I actually attended what's called a prostitution impact panel uh, on, on, in recently, recently yeah, huh? and there were only 15 John's there that would have covered the last three months. So only okay. 15 ordered into the program. In the past, oh. it, was, it was many, many factors so greater than that. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? Does it's that a mean, bad sign I because say, the right. $800 million yeah. business, there should be more I John's. See, so it. I really want to encourage and work with the department to get more operations going. We have to get the message out that this is not a victimless crime. We have to make sure the John's know that, make sure the public knows that, and 15 at a time isn't going to be a loud enough message. So we really have to work to, to get the deterrent factor right. out there. You're going to get caught. You're going to be embarrassed. And by the way, these young ladies are there through conscription, right. fear, and violence. I want to talk about the office. The incumbent's not running for re-election. Correct. Um, but there was an incident earlier this year that really shocked the conscience. And what we found is that one of the incumbent's uh, senior management apparently took 98 cases home. And 81 of those cases, the statute of limitations passed, 
and so they couldn't be filed. It wound up, I guess, 19 of them would have been filed. Of those 19, 15 were domestic violence. Right. Um, 17 cases didn't have the statute filed, and four were ultimately filed. But, sir, this is troubling. I mean, what do you make of this? And should you be successful? What can you do? Look, it was a rogue employee, presumably. I don't know. Yeah. But what can you do to avoid this calamity? It's a management issue. Right. Uh, about seven years ago, the district attorney's office, we sent our case management system to the city attorney's office. The sad truth is, it's not that this shouldn't happen. This really it can't happen if you're doing your job. Yeah, okay. It takes about 15 to 20 seconds to run to make sure, to run the computer system, to make sure cases aren't coming close to the statute of limitations. I likewise put out a, a detailed plan for how I would address domestic violence in the city, city attorney's office. Obviously, a very important crime that they handle. Right. And... Point number one was these cases have to be brought quickly, not within weeks or months, but within days, two days ideally. Especially given domestic violence being a crime where the victim is often reticent Absolutely. to get involved, but at least if you can pounce and it's fresh. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. think of the message to a victim six months later, if there has been no prosecution brought. And then on the other side of the coin, think of the message you're sending to the perpetrator six months later. Right. I'm, I can get away with it, is what the perpetrator thinks. And the victim, the police aren't going to help me. Those are, that's, that's the message that was going on many, many decades ago. We can't let that happen. We must have these cases dealt with quickly and, uh, and decisively, not, not, to, not to let them linger. These cases shouldn't come close to 365 days, which is the statute of limitations for misdemeanor. Uh, misdemeanors are often brought against folks that are engaged in crimes that disturb the people. Right. And that can often be those that are homeless. And we are really struggling with how to address homelessness. Homelessness is not a crime per se. Right. Uh, but throughout California, we have a homeless crisis. San Diego County has gone from 12th in the nation with homelessness to 14th. That's the whole county, not the city, but be that as it may. I got to think that you've thought about homelessness and how as a city attorney you can look at trying to address this issue in a compassionate yet efficient way. For my whole career as a deputy DA prosecuting crimes, it's been important to me to make, make and keep San Diego a safe place. Right. And it didn't matter whether we're, what neighborhood we were in. Uh, Southeast San Diego, Logan, City Heights should get the same attention as La Jolla. Right. No question about it. No such thing as an underserved neighborhood when I'm in charge. So they're very important to me. And now, if you look at a vulnerable segment of our population, it is absolutely the homeless population. Mm -hmm. Homelessness, it certainly appears to be at an all-time high it is. in San Diego. Statistically, it is. And it, 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 it doesn't, it's, the eye test tells you exactly the right. same. And the, and the homeless are showing up in places they hadn't in the past. Absolutely. The kind of metaphoric skid row is no longer exclusive. Absolutely. So what I did uh, about a year ago now, I went and I met with, 14 of the service providers in town, both on the, on the public sector and in the private sector, the nonprofit sector. And there was one resounding message from all these 14, even more uh, leaders I met with. The city attorney's office can do more mm. and do better in how to address the homeless problem. Every time the government or the city has contact with a homeless person should be an opportunity right. to get that person into the program they need, be it mental health, drugs and alcohol, job training, family reunification. I'd love for you to come back and talk about that. We know that there is a segment of homelessness, homeless people that are service resistant, but I presume you've looked into that issue, and when you come back, we'll talk about it. Great. Terrific. His name is Robert Hickey. He is a nominee for the city attorney in the city of San Diego. Two candidates left. That election will be held on November 8th. My name is Brad Pomerantz, coming to you from San Diego County on Local Edition.